Hey guys, Captain Time here. When people think of the biggest mysteries of ASWAF, a question that everyone thinks about but rarely discusses is the true size of the world. While we can use various tactics to conclude the approximate size of Westeros and other areas of interest, there does not seem to be a way to find the actual size of all of Planetos. However, I do believe there is a way in which we can roughly estimate the size and radius of Planetos. Weather. Now I know ASWAF weather and climate is the subject of countless theories and speculation, some of which Martin himself has simply said are pointless. I'm thinking of the infamous It's Magic Man quote, which Durham said when asked about the cause of the abnormal seasons. I will look a little at popular season theories, but to conclude the size of Planetos we need to look more at weather patterns in local climates, not overall climate and seasonal cycles. I'll explain. In the real world, also known as Earth, which is currently the setting of a lot more books than ASWAF, weather is driven by a lot of complex factors. However, the main patterns of interest which we can use to reduce and roughly conclude the size of planetos are ocean currents and weather cells. Earth is an oblong spheroid which is spinning on an axis roughly perpendicular to the sun at approximately 460 meters per second, almost exactly 1,000 miles an hour. This causes several permanent climate patterns. Firstly, the poles receive minimal direct sunlight and are consequently quite cold relative to the evenly heated middle of the planet, and wind patterns called trade winds arise due to the Coriolis effect. I promise this will all make more sense in a second, but the middle school meteorology lesson will continue for another moment. Due to the factors I just explained, the Earth's weather is split into six bands with three above and three below the equator. At the poles lie two polar cells, which carry cold wind from the poles down to approximately 60 degrees north or south. Going opposite these and carrying warm, wet air are the feral cells, which extend from latitudes 30 to 60. Lastly, between the equator and 30 degrees are the Hadley cells, which carry air towards the equator. This is why the equator has some of the warmest and wettest places on the planet. Now I'm cutting out a lot of stuff out, like in patterns or westerlies, but for the purpose of this discussion, all we need to know is the three latitudes of interest. First is the intertropical convergence zone, also known as the equator, which is at latitude zero. Second is the horse latitudes, which lie at 30 degrees north and south and are the location of the subtropical fronts. Lastly, we have the polar front, which lies at a latitude of 60 degrees north or south. Now back to ASWAF. We know that the world of Planetos is round, both because of Martin's statements on the fact and due to the fact that Alyssa Farman successfully circumnavigated it. We know Planetos spins on an axis due to the existence of poles in a basic day-night cycle. Because of these facts, we can conclude that the weather patterns on Planetos would be similar to those on Earth. Most importantly, the existence of weather cells just like our own. Now to determine the size of Planetos, we will need to determine the locations of two latitudes of interest, do some basic math, and we should be able to determine the radius of Planetos. Since we do not know how far north the lands of always winter go, or how far south so Thorian geography and climate goes, we should stick with what we do know. Thankfully, this Redditor did all the work for me already. Looking at this map and comparing it to Europe, we can certainly see some similarities in local climate patterns. Dorn is dipping into the desert area, which suggests the northern border likely lies on the northern horse latitude. Now determining a northern latitude is a bit trickier, but after a bit of research and guessing around, I went with this point here because that's about as far south as it consistently snows in the summer, and below this there is a noticeable weather shift consistent with that of what we see on the Earth. Now that we have these two points, we can use the wall as a guide and measure the distance between these two latitudes. The math is pretty basic and shown on screen here, and we can conclude that each degree of latitude is approximately 128 kilometers and the rough radius of Planetos is about 7,340 kilometers. Okay, but we aren't done. 
We know that Planetos goes around its sun and spins on its axis, which means that due to centripetal force, just like Earth, Planetos cannot be a perfect sphere. It has to be an oblate spheroid, which is slightly bulged out at the equator. The math here is a bit trickier, but I determined that the radius range is essentially between 7,300 kilometers and 7,400 kilometers. How does this information help us? Well, in a lot of ways, actually, but I want to talk about four main ones. The oceans, the size of them and their currents, the extreme west and east of the world, the causes of the seasons, and the hemispheres and the possible size of Sothorius. First are oceans and ocean currents. Oceans on Earth follow patterns called gyres, which are large, circular currents that form counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere and clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Copying this knowledge over to ASWAF, we can get an approximate ocean current map using Earth as our guide. We can further this knowledge by applying it to the size of the unknown ocean west of Westeros. Eustace Hightower, when pursuing Alyssa Farman after she fled the continent, sailed south by southwest for 12 days before encountering a storm after which they were supposedly attacked by Krakens, but this is a topic for a different video. After this storm, he met with Farman on three exotic islands and returned to Westeros while Farman continued west, possibly eventually reaching a shy, as there were rumors of the Sun Chaser being sighted there years later. Most ignore the entirety of Eustace's account, simply stating that there are three islands west of Westeros, but looking at the knowledge that we've already gathered as well as everything that he's recalled about the pursuit, we can gather a few more details. Assuming that Eustace has favorable currents and semi-favorable winds, we can give him an approximate speed of 5 knots. Assuming 12 days of this sailing, he traveled 2,670 kilometers south by southwest, or 2,470 kilometers south and 1,020 west. This does have a little bit of error, but we can conclude that his final location, the place where he encountered the storm, was roughly here. Because of the climate patterns and this math, we can say that the three islands are actually around the equator, roughly in this location. So what is west of Westeros? Well, I think the answer to that is obvious. Let's back out for a second and take a look at what we don't know. The surface area of Planetos, according to my calculations, is roughly 683 million square kilometers. Earth is 510 million square kilometers, meaning Planetos is about 15% bigger. Given the maps that we currently have of Planetos, the largest one covers no more than 17% of Planetos's surface. That leaves a lot of unexplored area. Now we know Planetos is similar to Earth, given that Martin said that Planetos is a Earth, but not our Earth. The maps that we have are mostly land, but the Earth is by far water. Most of this unexplored area is very likely ocean. Now we don't know how far Essos extends, but at the maximum, the width of the ocean from the high tower to the eastern point of Essos can't be any more than 33,800 kilometers. Now this is big, very big. In fact, it's more than 50% larger than the Pacific Ocean, and with contemporary boats sailing at maximum speeds, would take probably around 126 days to cross. This means it's very likely that Essos at least extends further, and that there is probably some landmass in the middle possibly another continent, possibly two or three more continents the size of Westeros. We can't really tell, but the fact that the ocean is this big suggests that there is certainly some land in it. On the topic of unexplored areas, let's talk about Sothorios. According to our calculations, Sothorios extends north of the equator by just a little bit. Assuming it went all the way to the southern pole, which is certainly a possibility, Sothorius would be 12,000 kilometers long, north to south, and an untold distance wide. This certainly lines up with the fact that no one was able to sail south of it, and that dragon riders were never able to find a coastline to the south. 
As a side note, if Sothorius did extend to the South Pole, it's interesting to think that there might be others on the continent, as I see no reason that the others would be exclusively limited to living in the Northern Hemisphere. The South Pole should also suit them. Again, this is just a theory based on absolutely nothing except for the existence of the South Pole, but it's still fun to speculate about. Even if we assume Sothorius takes up all this mass, and that there's nothing in between Westeros and Essos, it's still barely scratching the surface of the tree size of Planetos. There's at least half of this area unexplored that we have absolutely no clue what is going on, and that prospect is both exciting and terrifying. Lastly, I would like to discuss the seasons. While Martin himself has said that there is no scientific explanation for the seasons, it's completely magic, I'd still like to discuss some things a little. The Preston Jacobs Sweet Robin fanfiction project prologue suggested that the seasons were due to a random, patternless axle tilt in the planet. Maester John observed this by looking at the moon. This is extremely unlikely, as though we have accounts of days taking slightly longer or shorter the further north we go, nothing is near what we see on the Earth, where the axis is the cause of the seasons. If we look at the Earth, in Alaska the sun will never set during the summer months, or only go down for a few hours at a time. In the summer at the wall we see no such thing, even though it's roughly an equivalent latitude. So it's just interesting to point out that the axis is very likely not the cause of the seasons, and it's possibly completely some magical force, and there's no carryover from what we see in the real world. Furthermore, during the winter, the sun would never rise at the wall. Now while this could spark some fun line night theories, such as the fact that perhaps Planetos completely turned on its side during the long night, this is very unlikely. Another thing about axial tilt would be that the southern hemisphere would have opposite seasons. This is also unlikely, but is still fun to speculate about. It would be winter during the entirety of a long summer, and if there were others at the South Pole, perhaps they would advance then. It's just interesting to think about, but again, completely speculation. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thank you guys very much for watching to the end. There's a few things I didn't talk about in this video that I could say for a future video, such as the behavior of the moon, um, water currents, wind currents, other factors that would be a lot of fun, but I'm a small content creator, so literally every comment and every subscriber makes a huge difference, so please try to subscribe or comment. I will read all of those, respond to them, and consider them for future videos. This video is actually quite a bit of fun to make. I wrote the script on a 70 year old typewriter that ran out of ink halfway through so things were fun but when i did the calculations a few times i was actually way off initially i got um planetos that was like twice as big as the earth or 60 percent bigger and that doesn't line up with martin saying that planetos is the same size as earth or slightly bigger i eventually got roughly 14 15 percent larger which is still kind of on the big side especially considering that a few other people have done these calculations before and they all seem to get um, around 5 to 10 percent larger the two that I saw and then I saw one person have it smaller um, but their methods were quite a ways off um, there is quite a bit of error um, because of the style of the measurements and the fact that we can't exactly determine like exact rainfall or um, use other methods of determining the radius but what we have is it's within 10 percent i would say and that fact allows us to still theory craft and determine more from there so again thank you all for watching and i will see you next time